What is up? What is up? It's 8 p.m. Mountain Time, and that means another episode of Home Theater Fanatics Live. Tonight is episode 121, and we have a great episode for you. Today, we've got Jonathan and Kevin Couch from Heavenly Soundworks with me. Hey, guys. How you doing? Howdy. Good evening. Awesome. So um, I met you guys last week, I guess it was, at the Home Entertainment Show in Long Beach, California. The show. And, uh, yeah, the show, and uh, it was it was great, and you know I was extremely impressed with with your demo in room, and uh, and your little little tiny pair of humongous bookshelf speakers that you got <laughs> behind you right there. Um, I think they were one of the uh, the the show stealers. Uh, you know, in fact, it uh, I think a lot of people came out of your room with their eyes kind of big, saying, "Maybe I've been doing it wrong." <laughs> At least that's what I'm thinking. Anyway, um, maybe we can get started and uh, you, you guys can introduce yourself to everybody. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And good to see you again. It was nice to actually get out and see people face to face. which was Very awesome. nice. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, I'm Jonathan Couch, um, one half of the, the founders here of Heavenly Soundworks. And I'm Kevin Couch. And it was great seeing you there. And... Uh, you were just a very pleasant person to, to work with. And you see, I keep telling people that. I'm like, come on, everybody. I'm pleasant. They're like, not really. No, I'm like, really, really, really pleasant. Right in the hallways. Yeah. <laughs> You're a busy guy. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, there was a lot. But you guys were like two or three doors down from my actual sleeping room. So, uh, you know, I got to wake up to the music and go to sleep to the music uh, that, that they were playing in the hall. So it's kind of it's kind of funny. Um, and I guess for the folks that don't know, um, you know, uh, last week was the home entertainment show 2021, which is, I think the first, uh, hi-fi show in the United States to make it, um, yeah. since the time of troubles. So, you know, the world's opening back up and, you know, it's, it's really cool to, to be able to start going to shows again and seeing equipment. Uh, and then for you guys though, this one marked a milestone for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first, yeah. First, uh, first show for us to exhibit at. We've been to a lot of shows just on the other side as fans of, right. of hi-fi and of music. Uh, but this was, yeah, this was the first chance we got to, to be on the other side and be exhibiting. Uh, we would have planned to do it last year, but you know how that went. And actually it was, it ended up being a blessing for us because of that extra time of being able to fine tune everything to the state that we're at now. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, because it sounds good now. Yeah. Yeah, so, and that was, you know, obviously 12 more months of being able to fine tune and tweak and, and get things dialed in. So, uh, cool. so we're grateful for that. And, and get uh, more reviews. And we got to go to the CRC. The NRC? For, uh, yeah, the NRC. Sorry. Yeah. 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 National yeah. Research Council in Canada yep. and get into their Anaco chamber. That's super cool. So that's really awesome. That was a yeah. benefit. So that's cool. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the company, right? And and what you guys are doing. So um, maybe you can tell one of you can tell us a little bit about Heavenly Soundworks and you know what you know what what's the idea there and you know your goals and and then we can jump into product lines and stuff like that after that. Sure. Um, 
I'll I'll start. You can correct me if uh, if you have a differing opinion. Um, <laughs> okay. But we basically we started this a little over three years ago. Um, and when I say we started it, we started thinking of this as a an actual business three years ago. This has been something we've been into for a really long time. Um, but more, of, like I said, as fans and as you know, as as music lovers, uh, as far back as I can remember, you know, listening to music. So uh, it's something that we both share and. We dabbled in that for a long time, just building speakers and kind of more DIY. Uh, but right. about three years ago was when we decided that we, we wanted to try and actually come up with something that, you know, what's, what's the best thing that we could, could make uh, and see if, you know, we could take that to market. Um, and at that time, we would, have, we would have never guessed it would have been an active speaker. Uh, we had never done anything active before that. Uh, it was all, you know, standard passive speakers with passive crossovers and, you know, um, with, you know, external amplifiers and all the other sure. equipment. Yeah. Um, but really the, the goal at the beginning was we wanted to make the best possible loudspeaker we could. Um, and it didn't take us very long to realize that making an active speaker was the best way to fulfill that mission. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Go ahead, Kevin done it um we feel like that's the only way really to get to the level that we that we're at is is active right on act act, this is the way this is the way this is the way (laughs) right on so so at this point um let me i'm going to share up uh your web page here so people can get a big picture view of what we've got going on here and at least i'm going to try to anyway Let's go to a Chrome tab, and hey, there we go. All right, so is that coming across? Yeah, that's coming across. So, so this is the the speaker, right? So let me go to the product page here, maybe. Yeah, the five seventeen, and this is the guy. Yep, this is the one. Oh, what is that? The ten ten. <laughs> yeah, the five seventeen is the one that, that is available now. That, oh, okay, um, right on. And, and just like we had no idea we'd be we'd be doing active speakers three years ago. We wouldn't have told you we'd come out with a bookshelf as our first product either. Um, you know, it, you know, we were, we were after best possible experience basically, right? We're, we're into the music. We're, that's, that's what we're after and, and reproducing that in our listening space, the way it was intended to be heard. And, uh, so we had built a lot of floor standards really. Um, and then just through, testing and prototyping which you can see in the in the background of of dad's you know video there lots of building speakers and and modeling them on the computer beforehand and you know just the whole process basically we came up with this small package that performs like it does and and we thought there's no way we can't come out with this so we quickly switched gears to focus on that one first with some of those other ones were really close behind it and actually you know, the, the sneak peek here of something we haven't even shown to the public and isn't on our website yet. The next model that will be available after the 517 uh, is a much bigger version of it. Um, and a lot bigger version. I mean, we can only see about half of it, but it's, a lot it, bigger it keeps going. One, it keeps two, going. three, four, six active drivers and four passives. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Yep. So oh, seven being, active drivers, including the tweeter, right? That's right. Uh, so. Yeah. Right, yeah. so tweeter, two mid range, and four woofers on the front, all all drivers, and then four passive radiators, two on each side, uh, and it's all completely active. So it's same idea as what we have packed into the really small stand mount five seventeen. It's just, yeah, it's just basically built for a larger room. Yeah, much, that's cool. Can be up to a much larger room. I'm I'm curious. Could you take? three of the the floor standers and two of the bookshelves and run that as a you know five channel multi-channel home <laughs> theater or media room environment now you're yes. now you're talking <laughs> yeah i think i i think that's uh, i think i think that's something that needs to be done i think uh, i think somebody out there that's watching right now needs to <laughs> give that a spin and tell us how it goes that, that when are when are the new towers going to be available when when are you going to look at doing that 
that's a good question. So they look pretty right now. They're not, they're not perfect yet. Um, so, and I guess that's a good segue into kind of a little bit of the process behind, you know, yeah, taking your, your something design from, philosophy. Yeah. yeah, taking something from on paper to meeting the performance expectations that we have um, is it's really a pretty iterative, iterative process. Um, mm -hmm. And we, myself and my dad, we've got a pretty interesting um combination of skill sets so my dad being more of the audio engineer uh, and I can remember him talking about when I was a kid and, and him at work on his breaks designing speakers on paper you know doing all the math because he's into that right right um, and then myself I'm an industrial designer so taking all of his specs and, and kind of the parameters that we can work within and, and how do we make it into something that's beautiful and something that we can repeatedly manufacture and, and those types of things. So it, it really is something that goes back and forth. And you can see that with, you know, those prototypes behind dad there that really it starts off as an idea and we are specking the best drivers that we can. Uh, we're doing all the design work on, on paper and on the computer and modeling it out. And once we have something that looks like on paper, this, this could be really cool. We build it, we test it and start tuning. You know, and that's one of the beauties of the active loudspeaker design is that we're doing all the crossover and all the, all the fine tuning that you would normally do in building a passive crossover. We're doing that in a DSP that can be changed very quickly. So we can have a microphone and, and the proper measurement equipment test it, see where it's off, where it needs to be adjusted, make those adjustments and, and keep going from there. So um, this one is really close. Um, we've got, you know, we've got the enclosure down. It's, uh, this one is actually two layers thick of three quarter inch MDF all the way around. So it's- Oh, uh, wow. That, so what is that, an inch and a half or something? It's an inch and a half thick all the way around it. Um, it's got separate enclosures inside of there for the mid range drivers and for the amplifier, uh, and all the electronics inside of it, all that stuff has all been, been worked out. Uh, but taking this, because now this final version is different than that prototype. Uh, you know, it's slightly different from some of the geometries and things. Uh, the really important things have stayed the same of, you know, how much air volume needs to be inside of it and, and those types of things, the spacing of the drivers. Uh, that that stuff hasn't changed, but the overall form factor has slightly, and the makeup of it of you know how thick it is and where there's bracing and all all of those things. So now that we have this, it goes back to him, and he's got to go through that again of measuring it, going back to the graph and seeing where do we have little you know little peaks and little valleys that we need to smooth out. And that's a time-consuming process. Very meticulous. But with the DSP, we're able to just every little thing. We can we can do so much more than than a passive design with crossovers. Just I mean, it's it's endless. So right. We can so, make, we so, can make perfection. Absolutely. absolutely. Now, now, in in the in the bookshelf. So that's a three-way design, mm -hmm. um, and it's what a tweeter, a five and a quarter, and a six and a half, and then two passive radiators. Is that? What what is that right? I don't, I don't recall, recall it specifically. On the five seventeen, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a five and a quarter woofer. And what's the mid range? Is it a three and a half? Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay, all right, that makes sense. And I put a uh, I put up a video somewhere of a little bit a little bit of the excursion going on. I, it's probably on Instagram, and uh, people were people were loving that. And that's one of the really surprising things that you've been able to coax out of the speaker design really is the low end extension, um, leveraging those passive radiators. So, you know, folks that aren't terribly familiar, passive radiators is a, you know, say form of base reflex design. Uh, and uh, the, the form that you typically see is, uh, is the ported, whether it's slot ported or they use the, the circular precision ports or whatever you want to call them. Um, but the, uh, the, passive radiator design eliminates or overcomes a lot of the issues that you have with a normal ported philosophy. Uh, so I, you know, anything high end that wants to go base reflexes, you, it's almost always exclusively, um, uh, passive radiators. Uh, so I applaud you for that design, um, step and it's really, really cool. And they sound super duper awesome. Um, 
But so to get things right in my head, so you've got a DSP unit that's uh, producing three different outputs. So that would mean that you have to have three different sets of amplification in each speaker. So basically six channels of total amplification. That's okay. That that's really cool. But when I look over at the uh, the big boy over there. <laughs> Are <laughs> you're you're grouping those mids and those subs together, right? Or are, are yeah. the woofers together? And you're not With doing much bigger amplifiers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes that yeah. makes total sense, right? On. Yeah. So yeah, what we have total total wattage in the five seventeen is three fifty, and right. total available in the what this will be the five twenty one is the next model there uh, is eleven hundred. Okay, so, that's a, that's a substantial amount of amplification. So if you did five of those around your room, you'd be pushing almost six thousand watts, which yeah, somebody THX certification. Yeah, you need a big room to justify that, um, or a small one. I, I <laughs> I'm really good at justification, <laughs> really really good. Um, so let, let's take a second. I want to shout out to a few people that have joined us. So, um, you know, some of my show mainstays, Hi Fi Havens here. So hey man, welcome. Uh, glad you're here. Double uh, A is also here. Um, and then uh, a new person that I don't know, but he, he is R restricted for adult content, apparently. So what's uh -huh. up, Dope Action Big Facts? Uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Hi-Fi Hayden says that, you know, uh, gorgeous speakers. And he's commented on uh, uh, some of the Instagram uh, coverage that I put up. And, uh, you know, I think in general, uh, you know, people really like the, the design. And my comment there is if they, they like the way they look, they'll like the, the way they sound even better. Because that's yeah. that's the real magic, yeah. um, you know. You can you can have that full range experience out of a pair of bookshelves, and that's not a common thing. You know, a, a lot of people designing bookshelves they they just give up on anything under fifty hertz. You know, they're just like, yeah, you know, and, and they'll be like, you don't need it. You don't. You, there's no music <laughs> down there. And my answer right. to that is, oh, there there's there's a lot of information under there. Sh sure. You don't necessarily need yeah. to get down to 20 hertz or 15 hertz or something crazy like that out of a pair of bookshelves to listen to music, but there's plenty of stuff yeah. under 50, a lot, right? Yeah. a lot. And if Definitely. you're going to watch a movie on it by any chance, then you want it to go as low as it possibly can. So, yeah. Well, like I said, we didn't, we didn't intend to come out with a bookshelf <laughs> at the beginning, you know, at the beginning. So our, did you guys fight or something? And like, you go, I want the bookshelf. No, we're going to no, no, you know, I, if I tried to rewind in my head, I couldn't actually tell you exactly how that ended up happening. But, um, you know, but I do know that, you know, our goal was best possible music experience. And like you said, there is music down there. And some of that stuff is really what gets you into it. It's what is like pounding your chest and, you know, get, gets you into rocking to that music. Heck um, yeah. So that was our goal was cre recreating that. And somehow we ended up managing to do that in, this small of a package, you know, otherwise we wouldn't have come out with a bookshelf. Yeah. And miraculously we've, we've made, we've been able to get more out of the speaker drivers than they were intentioned for, than they were designed for. So That's amazing. By the, because you can see the, the passive radiators on that little speaker are very large. Yes. You don't normally see that in comparison to the size of the woofer and there's two. It's two of those eight inch mm -hmm. passives and they're, you know, they're, they have mass loaded to them mm -hmm. to tune that. Uh, it's just phenomenally low amount of clean bass. It's, it's just incredible. It, it is. It is outstanding. And you'd have to have a port. A, you couldn't make a ported speaker that size with that woofer. The port would come out of that speaker and just be obnoxious. Yeah, it'd, it'd be a curly cue. It'd be super yeah, long. So the passive is the only way to go. And it just, it's just amazing what was able, what we're able to do with it. Right on. So, and, you know, speaking of the design philosophy, um, you know, while we were talking a little bit before the show, you'd commented on how you design around frequency response and that kind of stuff for, for the speaker. Can you speak to that a little bit? I mean, what's your, what's your philosophy there? Well, that's all you. Uh, that's all you. Uh, I, I could answer, but I'm it's, not. It's, <laughs> no. Well, okay. We're, we're just, we didn't realize that we, we wanted to go for a flat frequency response. Um, but we found out that what that is to us is 
what you what you put in the speaker as an in input music is exactly what you're going to get out with our speakers and we felt like once we, we didn't realize that's what we wanted we weren't after that in the beginning but once we found that we could achieve that with then this was that's the goal and and that you know because now we're like it's like a studio monitor for your house right you know except i don't know of a studio monitor that does what ours does mm. it's 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 almost yeah. ruler flat yeah from 30 to twenty thousand hertz that's it's crazy the finest in the industry meaning so i mean every studio should have our speakers in it <laughs> i mean just that's, that's all it. right studio folks i know you're out there i know yeah. you're watching you need to check these out because when you do your mixing these are the ones yeah that's that's the right that's yeah that's yeah and what we found i think too is that you know a lot of speakers will sound good with certain genres of music and then maybe not so good with others. Oh, and, um, and you see this at shows all the time because mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be playing some smooth jazz and some classical music. And I'm like, Hey, can we put on some electronica? And they're like, Nope. <laughs> nope yeah, we don't, I, yeah. We don't play anything with anything other under 50 Hertz of information. Yeah. And yeah. what we've found is that if you can get to a flat frequency response, then it plays anything. Basically, whatever whatever we're feeding it, that's what it's presenting. Uh, we're not we're not, we're not trying we're to trying influence to that. that. We're not trying we're to take what was on that recording and say, no, we think that it needs to be boosted here. No, if it didn't need to be boosted there, they would have done that in the studio. Mm -hmm. right? We want to we want to just experience what was intended to be experienced, and that it's kind of it's tough because you hear flat frequency response and you think flat. Oh, that's boring. Yeah. No, it's not. Flat means that we're we're making it perfect. We're we're presenting to you what that musician wanted you to hear. Um, so and that's really made the biggest difference. So really, whatever we throw at this, and we really tried to do that at the show. We had a playlist that was printed out of a lot of different styles of music, uh, and we ended up actually getting a lot of comments from people of, "Wow, you have real music on here." Yes, um, that, which was that's cool. And too. We we. Part of that was we wanted to show, hey, we'll play some classical music, sure, or we'll play some electronica, or we'll play some pop music, or rock and roll. We had everything, and you know, people were into different things, and it was really amazing. As my my role there was kind of DJ the whole time, and it's it's so hard to judge when someone walks in what they're going to be into. And we'd have people from all different ages and different demographics sitting there next to each other. And it didn't matter what somebody requested. Everybody was getting into it, you know, and somebody else would request something totally different, different genre. And everybody was just getting into it because they were all music lovers. What someone you know? was going to like or not like. Yeah. But I, I totally yeah. hear you. No, that's, and you know, it's really interesting because there's such a broad, uh, amount of music that people are interested in. I mean, you know, every color under the sun, right? Every flavor of music that you could possibly have. And uh, it's cool that you guys are, you know, brave enough, right? Uh, really, it's probably just because you have a product that's capable enough to play all these different genres. Uh, and, you know, there, there are other companies out there that just, they just won't do it. You know, when, when you get out of the, the, you know, like 1960s folk music, you know, you're, you're, out of their comfort zone. And, yeah, and I've yeah. never heard those speakers play anything but that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah. as a consumer, yeah. that's not compelling to me. Right. I just, I mean, that's, that, that's not an experience that says that makes me say, okay, I'm going to buy this. Just, it just isn't. So a couple of comments um, and double a knows me. Well, he says, I know what Giles is thinking in wall plus active. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's something that I've talked about with people a lot in the past is, you know, what's the future of, uh, of home theater look like multi-channel, right? When you want to go in wall, you don't want towers or bookshelves or any kind of thing touching the floor, right? You, you want to have a clean room um, that, uh, you know, you can just experience. Now, the, the challenge, obviously, with uh, in wall plus active means that you've got to have power in wall somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think people will have to design for that. But you know, well, you I can wall that's thick enough also to hold a speaker in it. <laughs> sure. Just, just assuming that you can do that. But yeah, uh, I, I do think that at some point, you know, there, there is a, a future for this and who knows if it'll get legs or not and, and be able to walk around. But, you know, when people design purpose built rooms, you know, it might make sense to distribute the, 
the amplifier load around the room. You know, if you think about it, there are a lot of folks that, uh, you know, design amplifiers and they want that amp as close as, as possible to the speaker. Right. right. Um, cause that impacts damping factor and a whole bunch of other stuff. Right. Um, so, so that's, that's, that's something, something. You know, oh, yeah, I, know. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. I think also one of the reasons that we can get away with such a small enclosure that has 350 watts in it is because of where class D has gotten. Oh yeah. We wouldn't be able to do that with, without going with class D amplifiers. But you know, in the last 10 years, that technology has caught up, you know? Mm -hmm. No, that, yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, I'm, I'm doing a review on a, a number of class D amplifiers here in the future. And you know, the, the sound coming out of those, is I, it becomes indistinguishable, indistinguishable. I can't even say the word indistinguishable for me mm -hmm. uh, amongst that in class A or AB. I mean, when you listen to it, it's just it just sounds good now. It's it's not the it's not your grandfather's class D, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, like I like the Stark Sound uh, AD four three twenty sounds really good. I'm about to do a, a review of the Cherry. A new version from a digital amplifier company. So you know that that stuff's all just it sounds wonderful. So and I know you guys are what which modules are you using in yours? Ours are from a company called Hypex. Yeah, uh, Hypex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's they're one of the leaders in the market. Yeah. So you know those yeah, guys, tried, Ice Power. Yeah, we we tried a bunch of different brands of them, um, and we just we ended up really the 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 Hypex platform has been great for us. Mm -hmm. That, that's awesome. And, and and those units can get pretty small and put mm -hmm. out a ton of juice. Yeah, and they and they're efficient. So even these, like even at the show, we had it I don't know how many hours, nine hours of really cranking these things and yeah. you know, Steve you could touch the going. back, you know, they're they're warm, but yeah, it's plastic's come a long way. Yeah, it's just, see it's warming the sound. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it, so and that's one thing that I do appreciate. I like uh yeah. I like my speakers to be detailed um, and transparent and non-coloring. Uh, I, I don't want I don't want to use my cables or my speaker or my amplifier really to try and change try and the fix sound. Things, yeah, yeah, and I, that really it's really hard, right? It, uh, it really is super difficult, right? Especially um, as from a consumer standpoint of you've got a lot of money invested into this, and and then you want to invest more money to swap out one thing. And how do you do that? How do you right. listen to it and then remember in your brain what it sounded like and in the time that it takes to go and swap out some, even just swapping out a cable takes you, you know, if it takes you 20 seconds, then that's gone. Are you really going to hear, agree. especially when it comes down to really high performance things where we've already raised the bar to a certain level and we're talking about now between this and this. Yeah, I mean, you're like, the, you swung the pendulum 98, 99 degrees, and now you're like trying to go from 99 to 99.1. Yeah. And and I totally agree because, you know, I, I listen to some people and, you know, they talk about speakers that they listened to two years ago. And they'll be like, yeah, this speaker was this, this, and this, and had this kind of tonal quality and blah, blah, blah. And, and, I'm, and my audio memory is, is, is nothing like that. I you know, I, I can give you the general strokes of my impression that I remember, like it sounded good and it had <laughs> nice low end and blah, blah, blah. But I just, I always question that because I don't, I just don't see how people have that type of memory and maybe, maybe they do. And maybe I just don't have a, the photographic memory for audio and maybe yeah. somebody, <laughs> somebody else does, but I yeah. agree with you. It's really difficult to, to make those changes. And, and when you want to do AB comparison, you need to be able to just flip AB, 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 right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. I've yeah. even for testing some components, I've had two sets of 517 set up in here, you know, on, on stands, one, you know, yep. trying to set it up as best I can where, the distance between them is equal. The distance from my listening spot is equal. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to literally switch like that. And even doing that, it's still between some things, it's really hard to, to, to be able to tell, okay, I can hear a difference, but what is it that I'm hearing? And right. which one's right? You know, which one is the right one? Which one is better than the other one? It gets really hard. So um, that is one of, the, one of the benefits of being able, as from a loudspeaker designer's perspective, of being able to control a lot of the things in the chain so that we can do all that hard work and get it fine tuned and deliver that same experience. 
Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, a question, um, and, and I'll distill this down a little bit. Uh, any more shows for you guys this year? Hopefully, yes. Yeah, we, uh, we would love to. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, yeah, so I guess hopefully, yes, with that guy um, at one of them. Um, we've got the next two biggest shows would be Rocky Mountain and Expona. Yep. Uh, which both are on our radar. Uh, they're both within like two or three weeks of each other. So I know Marjorie was not very happy when Expona changed the date to like the week after Rocky. She runs Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Yeah. Uh, to the date, the week after, or whatever. Yeah. So it, that's it, tough. It's tough for yeah, it's tough for us too because we'd love to go to both, uh, and maybe we can. We, you know, we don't have plans solidified on everything yet, but uh, hopefully, yes, we will see you guys at one, if not both of those. Right on. That'll be cool. Uh, I will absolutely be at Rocky Mountain because it's, it's just down the road. 30 minutes down the road from me. Uh, I doubt that I'll be at Expona this year because I'm going to replace that with Cedia, which is – that's my show. That's that's the one that yeah, I have to be at because yeah. it's all custom, custom installer, home yeah. theater, home technology, you know, projectors, televisions, security systems, uh, you know, smart yeah. speakers, all that kind of stuff. I so went to Cedia a couple of years ago, and I got to – I got to experience one of the best movie experiences at that show. And I think it was probably Epson that had nice. set up like a, a, you know, like a really nice luxury home theater in this, you know, they built a room basically at the show. And uh, I can't remember how many channels of, it was like Dolby Atmos and all that. And sure, probably, played, probably uh, nine, six, nine, nine dot four dot six or something. Yeah, yeah. and they put, you know, the theater seating that was staggered up and, um, you know, all the lighting was cool. And That's I can awesome. remember they played uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, one of those scenes from that movie. And I remember thinking as I'm leaving there, that was better than any movie theater I've been to. And, yes. and someone could do that in their home, you know, it was cool. That, that is super cool. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's one of my, my big passions, being able to mix audio file quality audio with a compelling video experience, big screen, you know, uh, the cinema scope uh, format. And so you're not doing 16 by nine, but you're pulling it out like this. Uh, so that, that's, I mean, uh, that's, oh, I love it. When you, when you, when you hear the music and the effects and you get the tingles and then the cool visuals. Yeah. You're, you're, you're talking my language. So that, that, that's, that's super cool. Yeah. That's All something right. that we typically, you know, both of us usually have a set of five seventeens in our living uh -huh. room, which is where I'm sitting in mine right now. Uh, it definitely is hooked up to my TV. So I, I see it. Uh, yeah. So even, you know, we're not always critically listening, right. With, uh, 24192 recording or something. Sometimes, <laughs> I understand. sometimes it's a uh, YouTube, you know, watching a concert on YouTube mm -hmm. uh, and just, you know, having that experience be closer to the real life thing than you typically would of watching something on YouTube. That's awesome. No, and that's cool. And I, yeah, I'm really excited by the, by, by those speakers. Super cool. Um, so it's uh, about so it's halfway about through the episode, episode and now it's time for us to move over, over to content over. corner. So buckle your seatbelts. Now, let's take a break and stroll down to a cozy little place I like to call Content Corner. This is where we talk about all that cool content we love to consume. And this week, we're going to talk about fatherhood. <laughs> Everybody's like, what? <laughs> With Father's Day just recently, sure. Yeah, exactly. there you go. Exactly, it all Good works. Timing. Yeah, it all works. So... Um, you know, I, I like uh, I like Kevin Hart, and uh, I like streaming because I don't have to go to a theater. And uh, so, you know, I was checking out Netflix, and uh, the the new Kevin Hart uh, comedy tearjerker feel good movie. You know, it's 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 not his you know typical I don't know slapstick kind of comedy stuff, uh, but you know, it's it's, it's comedy, but still, it, it's, he's putting some feeling in there. He's you know, it feels like he's trying to stretch out his his acting yeah. chops. Just a little bit, but this is the story of a, and I won't ruin it too much. Um, okay, here here's the description that I got off the web that sums it all up into a sentence: A widowed new dad copes with doubts, fears, heartache, and dirty diapers as he sets out to raise his daughter on his own. Inspired by a true story, uh, and I, I think that's a, a pretty good uh, summary of the of the movie. Now, I will say that there's 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 nothing new here, right? This is. 
This is a story that we've all probably seen, you know, told before in one way or another. So, you know, it's not uh, it's not groundbreaking uh, content, but I think they did it really well. And, uh, you know, Kevin brought, a, you know, I, I think an additional dimension uh, to his his uh, acting that you might not have seen before uh, if you've just watched like his super funny, funny, ha ha stuff. Uh, so if you if you're into checking that out, that that might be good. Uh, but I did rate this in the patented home theater fanatics rating system. I, don't, I just made it up today. Uh, so maybe, maybe I'll do this. Made it up today and it's already patented. Man, Dude, it's patented good. and it's iconic. This, Let's have it. This is the way. So on sound, I rate this three out of 10 Aww. because, you know, it's all right. I mean, you can hear it, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there were no no instances in the movie that I remember where something played and I was just like, oh, man, that is really good. Listen to that Atmos effect or listen to that music in the soundstage that it's putting out. Or, you know, this is a great vocal thing or, you know, just, you know, it, it didn't have that. Right. Um, dialogue was clear. Uh, the, the sound for streaming was fine. Um, but, you know, nobody's going to take this movie and say, I'm going to demo on this. Right. <laughs> And likewise, on the visual side, I give it a three of 10 too. Once you get under three, then you get into the, oh, there's something wrong here. And I might change that where it's four and then three and down represents some, some type of issue. But the, the, the video, the visuals were fine, right? Um, you know, there were, there were no scenes that popped visually uh, with, you know, really out there cinematography or photography style. Um, you know, no effects to speak of anything like that. So, you know, it was, it was just a well... Uh, put together and well presented movie uh, that that checked the boxes visually and audibly, audibly, but nothing nothing there to speak of. Now, on the action scale, I give this a zero out of ten. <laughs> on the you horror factor, me. yeah, the horror factor scale, I give it a six uh, a zero out of ten rather. <laughs> My That's wife true. gave it a six out of ten on the horror factor, but for reasons oh, yeah. unrelated, she's like, no, I did not <laughs> like this movie. Um, but on the comedy scale, I give it six out of ten. It was. It was okay. It got a chuckle out of me every once in a while. Uh, on the heartstring side, I give it an eight out of ten, though, because I did I did shed a tear a couple of times uh, during the movie. So, you know, those are those are the new six areas on the dude scale of movie goodness: uh, sound, visuals, action, horror, comedy, and heartstrings. Um, okay. And maybe. I, you know, I'm looking for input on this. If uh, if there are different things that I should rate or rate them in a different way, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear people's thoughts. But uh, that's you know, that's kind of what I, I've got out of here. If you average that all up, yeah. It, I, I, oh, I know what I, here, here it is. I'll sum this all up, uh -huh. and then I'll tell you if you should stream it, rent it, or own it. And this one is definitely a streamer. Uh -huh. um, now, so it's like a recommendability scale. Yes. A Would you yeah. recommend it to a friend? Right. Yes Stream no? it. Stream okay. it. But it's also the dude. The dude. The dude scale. scale? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude yeah. Scale. I, my my audience is ninety nine point nine six percent male. I think. Uh, so I, I can definitely rate things on on the dude scale because, you know. Uh, how much action or, you know, the effects, that kind of stuff, you know, that, I mean, I'll watch a movie that has zero plot at all. Right. And, and if, if you notice, I didn't, I didn't rate on plot at, at all. I guess that's kind of covered in the heartstrings, horror comedy and, uh, and action a little bit. Um, yeah. So maybe I'll have to tweak this some, um, but uh, it's definitely a renter. Uh, I'm sorry, a streamer. Now, when I think rental, uh, just so you know, I'm thinking premium rental. So that would be mm, it's gonna cost you. Yeah, that would be something you need to pay for that you're not already paying for, but allows you to have access to the film sooner than you normally would via streaming. Now, this one just went direct to streaming. There's probably a reason it went direct <laughs> to streaming, but it went direct to streaming. Um, but sometimes there'll be a movie that is playing in the theater, has a theatrical release, but I'm like, I have to see this, I have to see it now, but I'm not gonna go to a movie theater. I want to watch it in my environment. So I'll rent it before you can buy it. Uh, and that's and that's like that, that's getting really high up in the scale, right? And <laughs> yeah. then just just beyond that is, okay, you have to own this movie. This is something that you're going to demo on or you might want to watch again in the future. Uh, and, you know, this this one doesn't rise to, to that level. It's a solid movie. 
And if you like the genre or if you like Kevin Hart or there's something else that, you know, calls to you, uh, then I would say go for it. But, you know, definitely stream it. I don't think anybody's going to be buying this on, on disc. I, you know, I, I think in maybe, maybe we're there now, but sometime in the future, these movies will never make it to physical media. They just, they, mm. they, they won't ever make it. Um, you know, in, in the past, if it was a bad movie, it was direct to disc meaning it didn't have a theatrical release. Um, and then it went straight to the Walmart bargain bin that you see people diving into. Yeah, you're, you're digging through and you're all like, man, there's boogers <laughs> there's, and all kinds of stuff in there. Good <laughs> in there. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to dumpster dive for a movie. Um, but yeah, now it'll be just straight to streaming. And, uh, and you know, if they're really bad, they show up like on Hulu first or something. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even on Netflix or Disney. <laughs> Straight to Hulu. Uh, gosh, somebody. Yeah, there's a Hulu executive out there. I'm never going on this show. He will never have anybody on Home Theater Fanatics. Yeah, I was, just burnt that I was laughing at you and then what you were. Yeah, that, that's yeah. right. So, so I, I'm so comedic that I can elicit that response from people who do that. And sorry, I took a shot at you at your expense. I apologize. I would love to have you on the show one day, and I fully support. And I actually pay you guys money every month. So there you go. There you go. And I do. Um, I pay everybody. Man, it's just I, th I thought, okay, I'm going to get rid of cable. So I'm not paying Comcast, but now I like, pay 80 or seven other people. Uh, just so everybody knows, he's not paying us. <laughs> no, no. They actually paid me to bring them. <laughs> One day, I hope that happens. I hope people are like, we want to get on your show. Yeah. And we'll give you a grand if you let us have a slide. I, just so you know, I would be so in for that. Yeah. I, I'm down. If anybody wants to give me money to come on this show, I don't care who you are. You can be on this show. I will make a video just for you. That's it. Where do I hit the X? Where's that red X at? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but uh, so that's, uh, you know, that was uh, what I watched. And I, in full disclosure, I had to watch this movie in two settings or sittings. Um, what? Yeah. No, I, I, and I guess it was in two different settings as well. So I watched half of it on on my ust ultra short throw projector in my living room and then i stopped and then i watched the second half of it and, and don't tell anybody on an ipad oh. <laughs> so you weren't glued to the screen then you were able to <laughs> pause it i know oh I, and you know just if I, I could just walk one floor down and you have know, got a, a 9.4.4 for home theater, full blown projection, big screen, anamorphic lens, and everything. No, it just no. Uh, it just it just wasn't it just wasn't happening. It just wasn't yeah, happening. Just so, run, just for the electric bill on that system. Yeah, you weren't going to do it. it. You're right. See, I was being economic, <laughs> eco friendly. Yeah. Is that it? Eco friendly, <laughs> economically friendly to myself, and eco friendly to the to the rest of the world. So now let's flip this around to you guys. Anything that you've seen, heard. Or even read recently that that you had put out there as uh, you know something folks might want to check out because I didn't give anybody anyone good recommendations of stuff to watch today, so maybe you can save us. Anything? Or are you guys just working too hard all the time? Yeah, who has time for that? I know, uh, ain't nobody got time for that. You know. <laughs> yeah, right on. <laughs> That's where we're at. All right, hold on, hold me. There, I've got a sound for this. Let me see if I can. Oh, that here. Uh, here we go. <laughs> you heard that That's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, now you need some violin playing, you know. Um, I yeah, can, uh, crickets. Crickets, okay. I got I got I got that one. Um I can do a harp. I can't do a violin. No, oh, that's us right there. Yeah, that's um, we're entering a magical world <laughs> of something. All right. So that's the end of Content Corner. So I, I need segue music instead of saying, that's the end. I can play some cool music. And it'll you had some so. good stuff at the intro. Yeah. See, I, I'll, I'll work on that. Yeah, I need to come up yeah. with another intro. Um, so now, though, we're going to move into the third segment of our show. And this is the tech question of the week. This is where I challenge our guest to answer a question that they probably, probably have zero experience with. And the question for you guys, the tech question of the week is, um, what are active speakers and why would anybody want them? Hmm. I know it's out there for you guys, but I, I think it would be good to really tell people kind of granularly, granularly what an active speaker is, because I'm sure there's somebody out there like, 
what it does exercise or something. It's, it moves around <laughs> a lot, you know. So why does an active That's speaker, good. and why would somebody want one? Well, ours definitely does move around a lot. It it, it, it indeed does that. But yeah, it moves yeah. a lot of air. It yeah. moves a lot of air. Yeah, I would Go say why it, would John. why you're would the you, one that why would you not want an active speaker? Well, let's let's start with the active. definition, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I know you're like everybody wants one, but let's tell yeah. people what yeah. it is. Yeah, so active speaker, uh, like we mentioned before, we've got amplifiers built inside of. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> he's well, out. He's I like, I'm not answering is. that question. Man, oh, man. Well, yeah, what we have is uh, active speakers. Everything's built in. Amplifiers, DAC, uh, preamp. Uh, it's all there. It's, passive, it's all there. Instead of a passive speaker where you plug your speaker wires from your stereo or amp into it. <laughs> you get a sound bite for that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. okay. So we're, we're going to do this. We're going to stop. We're going to rewind. rewind and I'm starting this over because everybody knows I cut this out into a separate video. So we're going to, we're going to start over. So All right. the tech question of the week, <laughs> what is an active speaker and why would somebody want one? And why is this so funny? Exactly. Everybody's like, what's going on? All right, on? take two. Take two. <laughs> take two. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I'll try and do this again without my phone killing the app that's running the video. <laughs> so an active speaker is what we have behind us, which is not just an empty speaker enclosure. It has amplifiers built inside. So where you would typically have a separate amplifier that's powering your speakers and your speakers are just connected with a speaker cable or, you know, speaker wire to that amplifier. These are actually plugged into the wall. So we're grabbing power and then we're sending that audio signal right into the speakers and it's getting amplified right there. Um, basically we, in, in our speakers, we have everything except for the source. So whether we're sending it music, from a digital input from a, a music streamer or like I've got a turntable sitting up there. I can switch over to that. Or like we mentioned before, also the TV, uh, all those different music sources doesn't matter. Once that signal gets into the speaker, then everything is handled inside there. We don't have any other equipment that we have to integrate with. We've got the amplifier preamp DAC, all of that stuff is built inside of the speaker system. That's cool. And then from a source point of view, uh, what what all can you feed there? So you can do RCA, XLR. What what all does it do? Yeah. So for analog, we've got balanced and unbalanced. So RCA and XLR connections. And then for digital, we've got a digital coax. We've got uh, uh, optical and an AES connection. Oh, cool. Right on. Uh, that you could, if you have multiple sources, like I've got here, I've got them all connected all at the same time. And the speakers will actually auto detect the active signal. So right now they're, they're turned off because there's no, nothing playing. But if I, you know, pulled up my phone and start the streamer, or if I turn the TV on, or I start, start, start a record on the turntable, they'll sense that signal and lock onto that input. Oh, that's, that's nifty. So you can kind of leave them in an idle state mm -hmm. and you don't have to select source. It, it'll just auto sense and then go to town. Yep. Yeah. That's well, really that's cool. It, yeah. It's great because like we mentioned before, we're really into the music. That's what we're into. And, you know, the speaker that we listen to most is the one that's the most convenient. Typically, uh, it just so happens that it's our hi-fi system is what's most convenient. So right. you know, whether it's background music, you know, or while, while we're eating dinner or have people over or if we're sitting down to actually critically listen to something, um, it's just a matter of turning that source on and the speaker kicks on and we're, we're off and running. Right on. So why would someone choose to go with an active speaker um, like, like you guys build as opposed to a traditional stack of technology with the, you know, a bunch of different pieces. And then at the end of that chain, a, a set of passive speakers. So what, what would drive one person to go uh, the active route? I think it's a good question that there's probably multiple answers to. Um, I, I could tell you the, yeah, I could tell you that the answer for us was, that that really lofty goal of creating the that musical experience in our room that if you know the best way to do that is active so that we can get that as close to flat frequency response as possible uh, and and reproduce that the way it was intended uh, so that was our goal 
Uh, I think there's other, you know, a, a, another big one would be if someone doesn't want to have to go through the process of the component synergy and yeah, the getting simplest. the right components. Yeah. The simplicity of it is, you know, is very different than the, the old way of doing it, of matching up everything and getting everything to sound just right. Um, and like, like you mentioned before too, of swapping out one thing here or there and, and how is it coloring the sound or how is it affecting it? And is it actually getting better or getting worse? Does it, does it sound better to me? Is it really what it's supposed to sound like? Uh, it gets really hard. So, uh, we've we've done all the hard work for you. If you're really after the best musical experience of reproducing that music the way it was intended, then it's really a tough sell to say you should do passive over active. Awesome. No, that, I think that's a great explanation. And uh, you know, I have a lot of applications even here in my home where active is absolutely the the right way for me to go. Um, and you know, if you have people out there that want to have a really, really high level of quality of audio, but might not have the space or maybe the experience or even just the desire to try and figure out how to put all these components together. You know, this type of design really makes it straightforward to, to go straight to a good experience. So I, I think, I think that's awesome. Super yeah. cool. Well, I think you, yeah, you kind of undercut it a little bit. You said a good experience. Oh, I, I apologize. Yeah. An outstanding superlative life changing earth moving <laughs> That's heart right. breaking if you can't continue to have that same experience all the time experience yeah <laughs> that's more like it <laughs> right on. Right on. oh okay so uh thanks for answering the tech question of the week i, I think that's an awesome answer and uh, for all you folks out there that are considering active speakers hopefully that helps you with your thought process and your decision making around that and if you're looking for a pair there's a link down below in the notes for, for this video, and you can click and get right to the website and check these out. A um, couple other people jumped on that I want to say hi to. Uh, my buddies over at Aperion Audio. Uh, one of your competitors, kind of, they, they have powered speakers too, but they're not all in on the powered. Uh, good guys, good folks, uh, make, a, make a good product. Um, Kevin S., so he's in Southern California. If you want subwoofers, this is the dude to talk to. Um, he runs GSG Audio with him and two of his partners, and it's really, really, really good stuff. Um, nice. I have a vote of support from Dallas Don. He likes the way that I've distilled the essence of a movie down to the <laughs> core components of goodness that, that you need to know about. Uh, and uh, and we have someone here to commiserate with you, Jonathan. Uh, Dalamandrum, I guess maybe is how you say it. Uh, yeah. The iPad life. Yeah, that yeah. I, iOS mobile device. Yeah. So it's all good. All <laughs> right. So now we're going to shift gears down into low. This is where we slow things down and we wrap up the episode. So just a few, uh, uh, a few cleanup items here. So uh, upcoming projects for home theater fanatics. I've got an Atlantic Technology 8600 Series 5.1 video that uh, is edited and it's ready to roll. I just need to upload and fine tune just a little bit and that'll be coming out. So you can check out the, the new passive speakers from Atlantic technology. Um, and what I thought about that, um, the subwoofer was active though, because you know, it's, it's got that in there. Um, and it, it was a great sound set of speakers and you'll see that in, in the video. Also finishing up the Harbottle audio M 18 X box uh, build and review. Um, I'm actually going to have Cody on the phone with me Saturday, and we're going to do a little tuning on that uh, on that 18-inch subwoofer in the theater. So I'm excited for that. The stain that I did on the box turned out pretty well. I don't know how you guys make your stuff look as good as you do. Um, I could never make anything look that good, no matter. I, I just I can't. I don't I don't have that capability. It just I I, I don't. Um, so you know, hats off to you guys. I'll send, I'll send you our recipe. <laughs> Man, I mean, there there's some secret sauce in there. I, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, look, maybe we can talk about it one day because, man, yeah. I just, I, I don't, I don't have the skills to pay the bills when it comes to, uh, to finishing that well. I can, I mean, it's passable, right? And you, people look at it and they be like, oh, it looks like somebody did that in their spare time. Um, I'm like, <laughs> they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, uh, that video will be coming out shortly uh, as well. So, um, you know, guys, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you for telling your story. Yeah. yeah, I know. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, and everybody out there, please take a moment, go to their webpage, look at the products, 
um, you know, find these guys on Instagram, follow the channel so you can be, you know, appraised of what's coming out, what's new, find out what shows are going to be out because I really recommend that you go listen to these because if you've not heard a high end set of powered speakers, I mean, you're, you're missing out. And these uh, towers are going to be amazing when they come out and the bookshelves are already just mind blowing. The, the base extension on these things is just absolutely crazy. And I, I was not prepared. I know there's a movie you are not prepared. I was not prepared. Uh, so like I said, super, super impressed. And again, thanks. Thanks to you guys. And then for the viewers, um, as always, I, I know you guys can choose to spend your time with somebody else. I'm super humbled that you'll spend your time with me and the guests that, that I have. So thank you for that. And I think that's it. I think we'll close it up. Thanks guys. Thanks, thanks everybody. So thanks everybody. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. And as I always say, see you guys in that next video. Bye-bye now.